Hello and welcome to Infinity. We're going to look now at the third macro in the uh, Dave's Alpha control set of free macros, which you can download from the link below and install in the normal way of dot macros um, through the library, which is View Studio Library, and go to there and import or drag and drop. Okay, so this this one here: arrays, white, grey, and black paper. And this actually came out of a previous video I did on how to do an erase white paper, um, slightly programmatically, but this has kind of sort of taken it somewhat further. So we've got here is, is we've got solid colours here going to black, so fade to black, fade to white, and fade to, to grey, which is mid-grey. And then you've got the similar down here, the black, grey, and white. So let's do that. So click on here, erase white, grey, and black paper. And what it does, it doesn't merge visible, so it gives you another layer. And in the same way as a number of other selection videos, that's selection macros, and you can control this. So I turn off the bottom layer and then bring up this. And then over here, you can see we've got the white, grey and black. Uh, so if I turn up here, the moment I take it off the bottom, you can see I got the checkerboard up, so white has now gone transparent. And as I increase this slowly, the whites will gradually become more transparent. So as you can see coming up here, you're getting transparency in the, this fade to white here, and you get a bit of it in the fade to grey, and so on down here. Uh, there's a snap point in the middle here, and that's because uh, it actually changes algorithm as it goes past this point. So this is kind of a natural stop point. Uh, but as we can go up here further and further, you can wait for it to catch up sometimes, but you get to a point here where very much lots of the light colours remain. You've got the saturated colours on the fade to black there as well. And uh, unsurprisingly, the same thing happens with the other two. So black, you get the same thing. The moment you're off the, the starting blocks, the black disappears, but then it's going to gradually pull back here, you can see the black disappearing there, so a good way of taking out blacks and so on. And as you move this up here, you get more of, more of the black disappearing. What you've got here as well is an invert, which basically goes from uh, erasing it effectively to selecting it. So I turn that to one, and now I've selected the blacks, and I can control how much the blacks that I select. If I go far and far enough up, you can see the colour in it, but it's only the dark colours. That in itself can be quite useful. The greys, just left to last, because it's slightly different. I start here from mid-grey, so if I got this, these here, if I drag this up here, you can see there, it's starting here from the middle, from the, going from white to black there and black to white there and from the bottom here. And so it goes from effectively from the middle out. So as I do this, it's going to erase the greys from the middle. But again, you turn all that up here, then you got you can see that some, you're even getting some loss in the colour here. But by and large, you're taking out um, all the colour. And you can bring these in, all of them together as well. So you start turning this up. In fact, if you put all of them at the midpoint, you can see there's sort of a, a natural combination here. The white's gone, the black's gone, and there's very little grey, but you're all faded down. So effectively, you've got, you're removing the, the monochrome. So let's try this then on a image. Uh, let's use this one. Okay. So what I'm going to do is, I'm going to go again to the arrays this and turn off the bottom one so you can see what's in the top and then running this if I turn this up it kind of erases paper here so erasing the whites there are many ways you can use this by the way for example you can use it in in um, helping to fix scanned images and so on but if you want to take out whites or if you just want to select the white bits then you can use this so, but let's, the way of doing this is to put a fill layer underneath it. So I'll put layer, new fill layer, and just drag that down 
under there, and they can give that a colour. And what you've got now is a form of tinting. So go here, but I can control the transparency of the top layer and change that underneath. I know there are other ways of doing this, but this is just to illustrate it in a, a kind of practical use. But you can combine these as well and get different effects. So actually it starts to get a bit more interesting when you start doing this as well. You can even do things like, if I turn these down, just change the colour of this. Let's say put that as a, a dark teal. Then when I work on this, bring up the blacks, I'm putting a teal into the shadows. So there's quite a lot of things that you can do with this. And again, your use is if you used a raised white paper that just gives you immediately a lot of control. But now you've got grey and black as well. Anyway, that's it. And um, thank you very much for watching.